Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day today. So we're still in Article 300 and we're going to be for a bit, by the way. Uh, 300.6 is what we're going to talk about, which used to be 300.4, which is protection against physical damage. So here's the rule that says, you know, wiring methods aren't allowed to be subject to physical damage. You gotta have nail plates, all of that stuff. And we're actually not gonna talk about nail plates today. We're gonna talk about two things that changed a little bit deeper into uh, section 300.6. So let's take a look and see what panel three did. Article 300, General Requirements for Wiring Methods and Materials 300.6, Protection Against Physical Damage. The protection requirements for materials beneath roofs were expanded and clarified. And, and really, that's the subject I want to talk about. Uh, the other thing that we did is the protective bushing for 4-gauge and larger no longer needs to be installed before the conductors are pulled. Uh, I have mixed feelings on that one. So 300.6e. Wiring methods and materials in or under roof decking. Okay, well, you can see from the top of the screen right off the bat, we've got a bunch of underlined text, right? Not just the section, but new words. Wiring methods and materials under roof decking must be at least an inch and a half below the decking. So this concept is not new. We put this in in it was either 2011 or 2014. I don't recall which. I think it's 2011. Um, but we've changed it and changed it and changed it because we keep on realizing that we're missing things. Initially, it said uh, raceways and cables, I think, right? Can't be within an inch and a half of the deck. And then three years later, people came back and they're like, well, that's kind of dumb. You can't put the conduit there, but you can put the box there. Probably ought to say raceways, cables, and boxes, don't you think? It's like, okay, raceways, cables, and boxes, right? And then over in Article 410, they had to add luminaires, right? And then somebody came back this time and said, hey, what about conduit bodies? That's not a box. That's not a raceway. You know, you, well, you can have an LB right up against the deck. And finally, some clever guy on Code Making Panel 3 said wiring methods and materials would be the better thing to do. That way we don't have to keep on fighting this and, and rewriting it every time somebody catches a little weird loophole in the code. Let's just close the loophole. Wiring methods and materials. But the other part is under roof decking. Do you see what changed there? It used to say under metal corrugated roof decking like we have in the photograph. Now clearly this is a violation and has been for over 10 years. And we can certainly see the concern, right? We've got that roofing screw going through the deck and you know, missed the, uh, it missed the raceway by a couple of inches. Fortunately, I never had to deal with this, but I have a lot of friends that have had their conduits just drilled right through by the roofing contractor. And uh, yeah, can't do this anymore. But here's the thing. It's not just under corrugated metal roof decking. It's above all decking. So this now applies to like residential, for example. Any type of roof deck can have some sort of fascinator, pen, uh, fa a fascinator, a fastener pen penetrating through the roof, right? It's not just those big old sheet metal screws. What about the uh, what about the nails that hold the shingles onto the roof? What about the bolts that hold the you know the uh, PV supports? onto the roof. There's a lot of things that penetrate the roof that can go right through, certainly right through an NM cable. So we no longer address what kind of deck it applies to. Any deck, you need to be at least an inch and a half away from it with your cables, your raceways, your boxes, your conduit bodies, your fittings, right? Any wiring method and material. Now, if we keep reading, it also says wiring is not allowed in concealed locations within metal corrugated sheet decking types of roofs. Okay, so looking at this, uh, obviously there's a box and therefore some sort of wiring method in the deck, right? And what we, what we can read so far says that's a violation. Now, there, there could be some allowances. Who knows what's above the deck? Is that really a roof? I mean, I don't see any roof screws penetrating through there, so maybe this is the first story of a building and I've got concrete above. And if that's the case, there could be a, an exception. So if there's no exception, this would be a violation. There's also an informational note that they put in right from day one that I think is a good note. And it, it reminds people the, the reason this rule is there is because of the screws that are used for roofing material. We don't want them damaging the wiring system either during the initial installation or when the roof gets replaced, because that was uh, a discussion that I had a lot of times with, with installers it, when this first came in, is they said, well, Ryan, if the roof is already there, why can't I go ahead and run the raceways up inside the, the roof decking like we have for decades? 
And the answer is made clear in the informational note. Well, because eventually that roof is going to get replaced. And when it does, then you're going to have to have new screws going through there and they might go right into your conduit. We also added uh, a third exception, and I got to thank my friend Russ LeBlanc uh, up there in Boston for this uh, for this photograph. Uh, this is the picture he actually sent to the code making panel to really clarify what he was trying to say, because as you know, sometimes a, a picture is worth a million words. So wiring methods and materials can be concealed in concrete that's at least two inches thick, and the accessibility requirements for boxes and conduit bodies in 314.29 must be followed. Now, when I look at this, you know, obviously we've got the roof hatch here, but if I couldn't see the roof hatch, I, I would have thought that this was like the first or second floor and not the actual uppermost floor. Um, I don't know if I ever saw concrete on the uppermost floor on the deck. If I did, I don't remember it. But anyway, we have an exception here, right? Why shouldn't we allow a conduit going through that concrete or even a box in the concrete as long as the access requirements in 314.29 are followed, which means you can't bury the box in concrete, right? You still have to be able to access the wiring. Okay, the other thing we did is 300.6G for fittings. We put this in, well, the rule itself has been around for decades. The language that we took out was language that we added in the 2023 and then ripped right back out of the code because sometimes you, you know, it makes perfect sense when you're in a room full of a bunch of other code nerds and then you put it into practice and you find out, you know what, maybe this wasn't a great idea. So here's what it says. Raceways with circuit conductors that are four gauge or larger must have one of the following methods to protect the conductor insulation. So this is where we're gonna talk about using a, you know, a plastic bushing or something. Now again, in the 2023 code, it said it has to be installed before you pull the wires. And I think usually that makes good sense. I mean, the, the purpose of the plastic bushing is to protect the wires, right? And when are they most subject to damage? Well, probably when you're pulling them in. Now, other people would say, well, it's not even just when you're pulling it in. What about when you're making it up and you're, you know, bending it down over the end to bend it and everything else? You could damage the wires then and you need that plastic bushing. Well, fair play. So, looking at the picture, this is a violation. Yes, it applies to PVC conduit. It always has, right? Four gauge or larger, you need some sort of protection device. But it doesn't need to be installed before you pull the wires. So, what happened was somebody made a proposal. And they said, listen, you need to have an exception to say if you're using pulling equipment that threads onto the connector or goes inside the conduit, then you can't have a plastic bushing because then you couldn't use this puller. So we started trying to put pen to paper and like, okay, exception, pulling equipment and finally we just threw our hands up and said you know what guys we're going to chase this till the end of the time there's going to be exception after exception after exception the truth is the code was fine for a hundred years without those words about prior to the installation the code was fine for a hundred years without those words it'll probably be fine for another hundred years without those words let's just take them out it's not worth the fight now you can still argue that this is required anyway. Remember 300.18, uh, 300.20, uh, I guess now in the 2026, 300.20a says that raceways have to be complete before you pull the wire. You could argue that it's not complete until you have the plastic bushing on. So I don't, still some room for discussion here. So what are my options? How do I protect these wires? Well, option one is an identified fitting with a smoothly rounded insulating surface. So yeah, a plastic bushing, right? So that's probably the most common solution. Although you can also use a listed metal fitting with smoothly rounded edges. So yeah, a chase nipple. You know, it's funny, uh, this is relatively new in the code. I think they added it in like 2020 before you could make the argument that chase nipples weren't even legal, which of course they're, that was never the intent. So a plastic bushing, something like a chase nipple that's a listed metal fitting with smoothly rounded edges. <clears throat> Separation from the fitting or raceway with an identified insulating material that is secured in place. Um, this is probably part of the fitting, 
Uh, although it's my understanding that you can buy this uh, after market and put it into the connector as well. And I think that's what item three is allowing for, right? Separation from the fitting with some sort of identified material that's secured in place. I don't think you're going to be able to just, you know, stuff newspaper or something up there, right? How are you going to comply with that? Number four, threaded hubs or bosses that are an integral part of the enclosure or raceway and provides a smoothly rounded or flared entry for conductors. So yeah, this is perfectly fine, right? So it doesn't have to be a plastic bushing. I mean, what if there's no male threads? So yeah, as long as there's some sort of a flared entry or open entry, then we're good to go. It also says that bushings made of insulating material can be used to satisfy this requirement, but they're not allowed for mechanically securing the raceway to the enclosure. And that's important. Uh, this does not take the place of the lock nut, right? You still have to have the lock nut, then you have to have the plastic bushing or the device of wholly insulating material. So let's remember that. And then the last thing in 300.6G is something that I never thought about, but you know, all non-metallic pieces of electrical equipment have temperature ratings and these are no exception. So it actually says the fitting or material must have a temperature rating that's not less than the conductor's insulation rating. All right, well, fortunately, it's pretty easy to get a high temperature rating on, you know, fittings like this. So this one is rated 105 degrees C. Your THHN is only going to be rated 90, so you're good to go, right? But if this thing actually said like 60 degrees or 75 degrees, that could be a problem. So you'll be mindful of that. And there you go. Probably the biggest takeaway is the change for roof decking, right? So even if you're doing a wood deck, make sure you're staying at least an inch and a half away from the bottom, from the underside of that roof deck, lest you get nails and screws going through it and lest you suffer the wrath of the authority having jurisdiction. All right, as I mentioned, we're gonna be in Article 300 for a while. So the next video is gonna talk about securing and supporting in 300.13, what used to be 300.11. I hope to see you then, and I hope you'll be safe out there. See you next time.